Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Big Blue Offensive Podcast with Mike Trainer, Jay Jules, and John Depot. Hey, what's up, Giants fam? Welcome to the Big Blue Offensive Podcast. I'm Mike. That's Jules. That's Sean. Guys, we are coming off a great win on Sunday, but people still like to complain about it. Um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, Jules won't complain about it. We, he won't turn into Stephen A. Jules again this week like last week, but it should be a happy podcast, man. We we did some good things. Our defense came alive. Our defensive player of the game, game Xavier McKinney, just made plays after play. He was breaking on the ball so well. I mean, he's the reason why I know Jules is going to get into this more, but he's the reason why we, why Peppers was pretty much like a trade bait this summer. I mean, looking back at it now, it's easy to say, oh, we should have traded him. We could have got something for him. But listen, we went into the season. We had a good D. We wanted him there to rush the passer. We thought he was going to be that guy. He started to be that guy the last few games, and then he got hurt, unfortunately. So obviously he can't get traded now, but Man, yo, Xavier McKinney's really like starting to show his uh show his feet, man. He got healthy, he got that over that ankle injury, you know, last year early in the year. So it's almost like he's getting past his uh rookie stage, you know. So he's playing well, man. What a what a great showing on Sunday, man. That D was all over the place. Hell yeah, it was. And listen, I don't know what you're talking about here. You know, I had to like pause myself there for a second, looking back on it, like we're talking in hindsight. No, 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 no. The proof is in the pudding, bro. You go back a couple of uh, a couple of these episodes ago, maybe like one around like the August section, where I was like making bold predictions, and I said the trade peppers. Why? Because I said McKinney was going to be the real deal. He was going to step up. The dude was a stud in Alabama. All right, he should have slipped. He slipped out of the first round, just like Old Jalari. These are two guys that were studs that I've been raving about for the last, I guess, I don't know, 18 months or so. So, yeah, it's about time. I love how people are like, oh, McKinney's coming out party. Listen, guys, McKinney's been here, all right? He is now in the system. He's playing all the time. I mean, we talk about this constantly, right? Imagine if you, you know, you had to play, but you're only playing 30, 40, 50% of the snaps. You don't get a rhythm. You don't get the read. You're missing out. You're not in the game the whole time where you're seeing offensive players. You're seeing who's getting tired. You're reading things differently because you're in the game. And now here he is having to be in the game because there is no more peppers. And the guy's shining, man. It's exactly what I called. If I can only get my first round picks right, I, I would be like the new game of the guru of, of the NFL draft. <laughs> yeah. Sure. What's interesting about the timeline with McKinney, you know, it's his second season, but last year only played five games and he didn't, it's not like, like he played four, five full games. I think the first couple of games he was, he was a little bit limited in snaps. So you add that to, you know, eight, nine games this year. Now he's basically getting to the point where he's played a full season's worth of games. And that's, you know, that's, that's a nice sample size to, for a guy to, kind of find his way in the NFL, so to speak. And it seems like he's coming into his own, but you could say that about every single person on the defense at this particular moment. Um, yeah. you know, the first, first bunch of games of the season, unfortunately they weren't. And, you know, you had talent underperforming at multiple, multiple spots. That's why we're talking about maybe the coaching, maybe this, maybe that, but the last few games, man, three, 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 three offenses, one by Sam Donald, who's basically career is over. But Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. The Raiders' offense has been good, and everybody on that defense has been playing really, really well. It's it's exciting to watch them play, especially if you're going to get big plays out of them, like you know McKinney did, and um, that Logan Ryan play. The obviously the Quincy Roche f- sack oh, fumble. Quincy Roche been all over the place. He's been getting the pressure, man. Did you see the the? Did you see like a highlight of the play? Like rewatch it. I mean he. I don't particularly know the, you know, much about the, the left tackle he beat. Um, but from just listening to other people talk about it and stuff, supposedly he's one of the better left tackles in the, in the league. This kid's a, you know, a fifth, a sixth round rookie that was, you know, dealt by his team, didn't even make his own team that he got drafted by that we were able to get our hands on. And now he's playing the bulk of the snaps and making big plays. It's pretty awesome. I mean, listen, I really don't know how in the world Quincy Roche fell as far as he did. Because literally, like, I'm, I'm literally, like, siphoning through some notes that we had written down way back in, like, March of this year. And, like, they, the experts and, and things that were being discussed at the time, they had that dude going as a late 
second round, early, mid, third round pick. And he fell all the way to the sixth round. I don't know if he just had a bad pro day. I don't know what it was. And then he goes to the Steelers, and the Steelers cut him. I can't believe it. He doesn't even make the Steelers team. And, like, all of a sudden now you're seeing, you know, this talent that he had and, and everything that we were hearing about back in March and February of this year, where all of a sudden this guy's coming to fruition. And, and you know what? I'll tell you the truth. If this can continue, and I don't know if it will or not, you know, I don't want to get too excited. It's only been a couple of games. But, man, I'll tell you right now, it, it is getting interesting because if this can continue with Roche, we may need, we might not need that pass rusher. And that opens the door where, look, we'll address the need of the offensive line, which we obviously know is going to be one of our first two picks in that first round. But it definitely leaves the door open if we don't need that other pass rusher where we could just get a playmaker, whoever it is, whether it's an offensive play, a defensive play, a lineman, it doesn't matter. It's like literally we have we might have that opportunity with at least maybe that second pick to get the best talent that's available and then just work them into the team. So I don't know, man. I'm excited about seeing Roche. I really hope this dude works out. That would be nice <laughs> to get uh <laughs> be able to draft two offensive linemen, I guess, in the first. If Imagine that, that. Oh my that god, dude, that like, would be... be pretty uh pretty crazy, especially with guys coming back. Because listen, I don't think any of us really have that great of faith in Nick Gates coming back to full strength. How sad that sounds. Um, you know, oh, Shane Lemieux, he's still quite, well, I know you do, John, you're a very optimistic guy, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> optimistic Shane, John, <laughs> Shane, Shane Lemieux, like, I mean, who knows? Like, I thought he'd be pretty good. Like he was supposed to, he was penciled in as our left guard, but he's still a question mark. Um, you know, this past Sunday, like getting into like the offensive line, like, man, people were tight on Jason Garrett, but like, if you look at like Matt pair and, and Nate Soldier on, on each side of the the ball, like these guys were getting pressure like left and right. You do, you don't have time to develop. You can't call the right play to have Tony go down thirty yards. And by the way, I started Tony and Galladay in one of my fantasy leagues together, thinking they just got to fucking pass the ball. But then I didn't I didn't bother to look at the game plan. The the Raiders had like the twenty eighth worst uh, run defense. So Giants, of course, focus with Booker T, which I understand that. But listen, guys. Get off Jason Garrett's dick. Like, obviously, he can't call the plays he wants to. The playbook is probably cut in half based on, like, the pressure they were getting. Every – I mean, even on the opening drive where Jones, like, was connecting on these passes to Evan Ingram, and I tell you, they they were getting pressure like crazy. Like, it's, it's a problem, man. We need Thomas back after this bye, no doubt, because that offense just looked kind of terrible after that opening drive. You know what's crazy, man? You had you had a run game that was working. They were they were dominating, in as, as far as the run game is concerned. They that's a, that's a lot of a lot of yards to get on the ground. One hundred and twenty something yards or whatever. It's one hundred thirty yards on the ground. Actually, it might have been more than that because I think, I think between Penny and uh, yeah uh, and, right. and Booker it was like one twenty and Jones had another fifteen or whatever it was. Regardless, it, it was a lot of a, a lot. So, although they weren't scoring touchdowns. They, they should've. weren't the, the the run game was working. So why not keep leaning into it and just making it work? But who are they missing? Gotta take some, what happened? Who were they missing though? I seen you tweet Barkley. this out about it. Barkley. Yeah, like look at the, the there was a couple like breakaway runs where Booker T stopped because he ran out of gas, where Barkley could have just took it to the house. That's giving no points yeah. right there. So if we're not missing Barkley, like you guys are idiots. Yeah, there was just there was a one one play where Booker was past past the line already, and there was really just green grass in front of him. But it, he's he's not a particularly fast running back. He's just a like sound running back, I guess you can say. He does everything well, but he's not special at particular anything. Where Barkley's going to bring that to the table, and it's exciting, man. You know, two weeks we could have we could have him back. You know. The offensive line started, you know, they've been run blocking well. They haven't been mass blocking well for shit, uh-huh. but run blocking well. So if you're gonna have you're gonna have that with Barkley, it would hit him out of the backfield. It should be exciting going forward. I mean, listen, I, I still don't know what to think of Garrett, right? You know, I, I've been trying to make as many excuses as I possibly could for him, and I still want to give the benefit of the doubt that the offensive line and, and not having Tom, it's not having Barkley, not having healthy receivers, even though Gallaty was back and Tony was healthy. It, it, it has to affect the offense. It has to affect the play calling, but I don't want to make any more excuses for him. I would definitely love to see 
especially if we go into Tampa, that we finally have a healthy Thomas, a healthy Barkley, a healthy Galladay, a healthy Tony, you know what I mean? And, and Slayton, and all of a sudden, and both of both the tight ends, you know, and, and Shepard, whatever. We don't, you know what? We, maybe we're missing him, and it's fine. But, you know, I would love to see that. And now he opens it up a little bit, and we have a little more time. We have a little more protection for Daniel Jones to get that ball down the field and see what happens and then judge him then, right? And come, come away from that game and say, look, the pass coverage uh, pressure rather wasn't like to the point where it was just over the top. And we were able to hang in there. And he had four or five seconds to look down the field and throw the ball and then really give a, a grade or a criticism to Gary. But I keep saying this too, man. Look, and I know we're going to get into it later. We're going to talk about the, the current schedule and, and what lies ahead and all those things. And that's where we'll get into that more detail. But, you know, I, I definitely think that Garrett survives this season. I don't see him going anywhere. We're going to have to deal with it for the rest of this year. And I really think that the, the last stretch of this season is going to be like something where he's going to be graded heavily. And, and you know what? Maybe we opened up something with this running game. I mean, look, that there was this is one of our best running games. Although the Raiders are known more so for their pass rush, that's sort of their best part of their defense. And it was something I was mentioning last week that we had to take to mind because they can get after the quarterback. That they can do. They can't stop the run. They can get after the quarterback, and their secondary is suspect, right? And that's the reason why that Raiders team is the way it is. So it was good to see that, you know, Booker T, he's a heck of what they call a downhill runner, which just means, look, you get, he sees the hole and he hits it as hard as he can. And he runs through that hole and looks at, and tries to get out. He's not flashy. He's not making big cuts. He's not running people over, but he could do that. And sometimes that's effective. And it's going to be cool to see him as a sort of change of pace or to at least give Barkley a blow as the season continues later on this year. It sucks that Gary Brightwell couldn't like get the playbook down. You know what I mean? As a, as a rookie, because I would have liked to see him, you know, playing these couple games that Barkley missed. It's really too bad because he has like a little bit, you know, more breakaway speed, obviously, than, you know, Booker or Penny has, to, you know, to hit that hole and go. And that's what we kind of needed against that Raiders defense. But we want that, sure. a, a part of a, a part of me wants to just roast Jason Garrett, but a bigger part of me knows that Jason Garrett isn't acting with complete, complete autonomy. Like he's influenced by what Joe Judge wants to him to do he's not just out there freelancing and saying nah i want to just score you know be the most conservative coach in the world 17 20 points is enough that's not what he's out there doing that's that's joe judge saying okay this is how i want to play this game this is the game plan for it he's going out there so they both are gonna have to fucking own up to the fact that they you know they've just been playing too conservative it's you really think that's it john you don't think it's, it's what what you don't think it's yeah. that, that they, they're they so limited with a backup fucking offensive line? Well, this is the thing. Before the backup offensive line, they still weren't going crazy with being aggressive. They've been playing to what they think, they're, what they're, what they think their game plan is going to be. So they're going to have now, you know, God willing, Thomas and Barkley come back for the Tampa game. And I'm not saying they're going to go out and score 30 on Tampa, but yeah. they're going to have, you know, the next – you know, four or five, six weeks to see what they can get out of this offense down the stretch. They're going to be playing some bad teams. It's not, the second half of our schedule is nothing like the first half of our schedule nope. at all. So, I'm glad you brought that up, man, because I want to yeah, get into that in a few. We might have some punching bags on 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 the on the on the schedule ahead of us, and if they can go out there, they can be a 24, 25, 26, 27 point a game offense. Then, and they start winning games, then maybe. Maybe you kind of just see how things go, but if if they're they're struggling to beat fucking the the Dolphins and teams like that, and they're still only scoring 17, 20 points with Thomas and with which we call it, uh, you know, with Barkley there, with Galladay and Tony and every everybody healthy, at that point, then I just I I want it, I want them to not scrap everything. What I want them to do is get somebody else to play call put Garrett up in the fucking tower or whatever the case is, have him, you know, just kind of sit back and almost influence what what's going on in offense, but have a play caller in the moment, be able to have the kind of the, uh, you know, the capability of play to play, setting things up and being, more, you know, b being a better play caller, essentially uh, do that for the last three, four games, if you have to. And then that way next year you have a better, better understanding. Like if it's Freddie kitchens or, you know, Jerry Soplinski or whatever his name is, Whoever's next in line for that duty, if J. 
Jason Garrett got COVID, which I think it's Freddie Kitchens. If, if Garrett can't get the job done in real time, have him finish out the season. Have him play December as as the play caller and see what happens. That way, you know going into 2022, if you may may or may ha, may or may not have something on your hands. They're not changing anything after the bye. They already said that, right? And, and I'll tell right. you this: Look, guys, we we you know we we looked at the season. We were heading in right, and, and we had this. We heard this like this stretch of death, right? Oh my God, the next seven games that the Giants have to face. And, and listen, I, I do recall we can literally go back to uh, seven weeks ago when a certain somebody on this show said, look, the reality <laughs> is, all right, <laughs> I don't know who the certain somebody was, um, maybe me, but uh, anyhow, we were, you know, I was saying, I said, look, Giants fans, you got to understand this. You have to accept this. If the Giants can go three and four over the next seven, that's a win. Anything above that, we are over excelling. And guess what? We're three and three, and we should have, could have, maybe would have, beat the Chiefs, right? So that was all one that could have gotten us over that hump. But here we are still with one game remaining, coming off the bye, trying to get healthy, with one, going against Tampa, obviously, after this bye week. And that's the last of these seven games. If by some chance, because this is how I always see things, right? Tampa coming off of a hard loss, going into the bye week, they're going to come in, and we'll get into the pick segment, and I'll get into more of this, but they're going to open up a can of whoop-ass on fucking Washington. I don't care what anybody says, all right? And, and that's where that that's their get-right game, their comeback game, whatever you want to call it. And, and there's going to be a lot there, where if you see certain holes or certain things not working for Tampa, or they're still kind of banged up, that opens up the door for a healthy Giants team to sneak in. And I'm not saying they're going to win, but it definitely does. And it gets interesting if they pull out that win. Because if they could somehow beat Tampa, right, and end up getting a four and six, which is going to drive me insane all season long, because at the very least, it should be five and six. And we can argue and go back and forth about it being six and five. But for the most part, we beat Washington. And I'm going to say that till the end of the season when we kick the shit out of them and we get that rematch. But even with that said, you're right, John. Now the season starts to get more favorable, right? The, the next stretch of games are, are winnable, manageable games. Granted, you got Tampa in there, you got the Cowboys, and you have a Chargers team that's been up and down. You got two against the Eagles. The Dolphins and the Bears, look, the Bears look like they were out of out of their own league getting destroyed last night, and then they came back, and they should have literally beat the Steelers. So I just don't understand that Bears team. They can look great at times and then look terrible at others. But obviously, as the season goes down, we, we can see that this opens up the door for opportunity. Do I think the Giants – are going to somehow string together enough wins to somehow sneak into the playoffs. I highly doubt it. Is it out of possibility? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. All right. Uh, to me, it banks on that Tampa game, dudes. I'm going to tell you straight up because if they win that Tampa game, all of a sudden they go from being a seven and nine, eight and seven team to all of a sudden jumping up and they, they you know, they, they got, excuse me, I'm saying win, eight, seven wins rather. Uh, they get that ninth win, you know, and that's a reality. We're all of a sudden at nine and eight, you know, I, you know, I, and it's all going to start with that Tampa for me. I, that's how I see it because Jules, we'll go we go through those games. Yeah. We only lost to them like by two points last year. And probably should have been beating them because the referees kind of like, you know, kept their flag in their pocket. So that game could be close. Plus Tampa's defense, their secondary is pretty garbage and they're beat up. So they're going to have to pass on them. And I'm hopefully like, you know, more than five to 10 yards, they could, you know, pass it over that mark. So I think we have a shot. <laughs> Any given Sunday, guys. I mean, look look around the NFL. You, you had the Bills lose to the Jaguars. You got, you got, it was 9-6 to six the game. And it's like two kids who don't know how to play Madden played a full game and finished 9-6. Like, that, you never see that in the NFL, especially for one of the best offenses in the league in the Bills. Then the Cowboys, what, the, the Cowboys got blanked pretty much the entire game until it was garbage time. I mean, any given Sunday, you never know what happens in football. That's why, you know, Vegas is able to make so much money. John, you're leading me, you're leading me into the, the tech. Did you get the text I sent you guys? I know Jules got it, but like you're naming all these upsets that happen. So I was in Atlantic City over the weekend, you know, getting hammered. You know, they got the sports book there. So I put in a dumb like seven, eight game parlay, and it was all like stupid money lines: Jacksonville, Tennessee, uh, Tennessee, Denver, um, Cleveland to win. Um, there was another game, like another two games, but. I had the rest. I had like the Bears and Houston money line to win one point five million. So last night, no I'm like, way. I'm like, thank God the Bears lost yesterday because if Houston was the only team that cost me one point five, I probably would have jumped off the Tapazi or George Washington Bridge because it was insane. But I had another bet where it was like four part four or five for like 
four hundred bucks to win four hundred thousand, and Houston was the only team that fucked me in that no. bet, dude. It was just a crazy Sunday, and I just like I was just upset and doing all money line parlays because on DraftKings and in sports books down there, you could do unlimited money line parlays and make a fucking fortune if everything just so happens to go that route. It's not like a traditional bookie where they kind of cut you off. You know, they max you out at like you know, 5,000 bucks or something. You know what I mean? But DraftKings, do uh, either DraftKings or the sports book in Atlantic city. Once you're in Jersey, you can put the bets in on like on your phone and it, you know, they, give you, they give you good odds. They give you money back unlimited parlays. Like I said, it's dude, it's, it's fantastic, man. Like I'm, I'm probably going to drive to New Jersey, like just so I could put bets in this weekend and try to do this all over again. <laughs> that shit's fucking fun. I miss, I miss gambling. I watch football at my house. Yeah. Well, 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 What's well, the moral of that story, right? Any given Sunday, which we always preach, right? Any given Sunday, anybody can beat anybody except for in Houston. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, listen, yeah. Houston's been so bad this year. Without yeah, Tyrod I mean, Taylor starring. Yeah, I know. I mean, listen, I understand the hype there, but listen, Houston's just bad. Dude. They, they are legitimately going to get the number one pick. And whatever quarterback is there, which there are a couple, kid and Ole Miss looks pretty good. We'll definitely get into that during the offseason. But there will be one or two quarterbacks that could be that pick, and that that's what they're playing for. I mean, like, there's no doubt about it. If no Houston wins another game this year, I'll be shocked. <laughs> you know what you know, like about Miami? Like, all of a sudden, I found out before the game, uh, Tua wasn't going to start. I'm like, oh, no, now they're going to win. I'm like, I, knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> So wait, now guys, look with with uh, with eight games remaining in this in the season for the Giants, right? You know, going into this bye week and all that. Let me hear some predictions. What what is your honest prediction? What you think the record will be over the next eight games, John? You go first. Six and two. Six and two. All right. Any predictions as to who uh, maybe the shocking win would be against? I guess, yeah, I mean, listen, I when I say shocking, shock, right? shocking, but I think they go into LA and beat the Chargers. Okay. All right. That, yeah, right. that was definitely one of them. Right. Not shocking, but like it has to be a bit of an upset. Well, they're going to be underdogs for sure. I mean, unless they go out, they go and blow out the next however many teams until they play them, which fucking bring it on. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> but they're going to be underdogs going into LA uh, to play the Chargers. So, uh, I could see them winning that game, though. He, Justin Herbert, although he's good, he's still a young quarterback. And we have veterans that can't figure out our, our, our secondary when they're playing well. And the Giants seem to have hit their stride with the defense. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they were productive, the Chargers offense, but not enough where they were able to outpace, hopefully, our newly minted offense with everybody healthy. So do we, do we sweep the Eagles, beat oh, the yeah. Cowboys, or oh, beat yeah. Tampa? Definitely, oh, I think that I think that <laughs> I think it's possible that we total between the two games outscore them by thirty points between the two. Right, games. So what you're telling me, John, is that the Cowboys are going to sweep us, right? Because because that means we lose uh, to yeah. Tampa, we lose to the boys, right? Because we got beat the Chargers, the Bears, the Dolphins, the Skins, and we sweep in the and we sweep in the Eagles. So yeah. just so you know, I, I, yeah, I know I do. I've I've come I've I've come to the. Um, the, I'm at peace with it because if it does work out this way where they lose to the Bucks and they lose to the Cowboys and then do I get to trade that, watch Tom Brady win against us and then fucking have to swallow the pill of Dallas sweeping us, but that means that we get to win every other game, five or six games, and those last few games coming down to the wire, those are going to be basically playoff games. And you know what? If we're competing for a playoff spot after – it's the start that we had and how, the, you know, everybody just buried us and we're able to kind of claw our way back into contention in some way and have December be meaningful football games. I'm about it. Mike, go. What's your prediction for the last eight games of the season? About it, about it. Um, well, listen, we got a good, uh, we got a good combination coming into the, the second half of the season after the bye week. We got, you know, kind of like an okay schedule. It's not as brutal as it was before. And guess what? We're getting healthy again. Yes, because injuries matter, all right? In the NFL, when everybody <laughs> drops dead and you can't put a full team on, shit happens, all right? So, like, listen, we need Andrew Thomas back. If Andrew Thomas comes back and Barkley comes back after the bye, listen, it all depends on how we play our division the rest of the way, obviously, with, with Philly, Washington, Dallas. Um, Dallas, you know, Dak don't look right. He's been hurt. He didn't look right, you know, coming back in that Denver game. So that's something to worry, you know, watch out for the rest of the year with Dallas because their defense is not the greatest, all that. I know Diggs was having a good year, you know, making a lot of interceptions, but 
their defense is still shaky. Um, you know, Miami should be a good bet, in, you know, to, to beat them. Um, on the road, of course, we got to go down to Miami. We got to go out to the LA Chargers. Chargers got a, a good team, but I know we could beat them at the Bears. I think that's that's a one we get pretty pretty easily. And then you know, with Washington, I think we owe them. Like you said, oh. Jules, I think that's going to oh, be yeah. So I, I would say, like, listen, I could see I could see us coming out and probably losing to Tampa because it's Tom Brady. You know, he gets everything on Monday night. And, you know, then after that, I think, you know, we we go on like a, a little bit of a run and I don't see us losing the rest of the way. I think we go seven and one. Yeah, I Whoa. said seven and <laughs> one still sticking with the original thing. Where we're going to get 10 wins this year. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm right. Look out, Mike. Ten and seven is the bet right now. That's I so mean, funny. look, I'm going to stay with what I was saying earlier. I don't want to put too much emphasis into this Tampa game. But it's all the NFL is all about building momentum, right? As soon as these teams look at Tennessee, they pull out this shocking win against Buffalo. They have been rolling since their defense looks better than it's looked all season long. And their defense was a paper, was like a paper mache in the beginning of the year. And they've been rolling, right? It's all about momentum. The Giants have not yet gotten two wins in a row. We need that hump. If you could come out and make a statement against Tampa, yo, you know what? Yeah. Seven and one, all of a sudden, maybe it's not that crazy. I don't know if that, I don't really believe in that one, but you never know, right? I think getting over that Tampa hump, I could easily see the Giants go six and two over the last eight. That's beating Tampa. They don't beat Tampa. It's probably more realistically five and three. And even though that may seem disappointing, they were favored to get what? The under over was seven games. We went on a fucking rampage and said, bet your lawn, bet your house, bet everything on that. They still get to eight. They still cover the seven. And with a disappointing start to the season, it wasn't a terrible end to it. Because if you count last week's game, you're looking at the last few being like six and three to end the season. Now, with that said, they beat Tampa. I am going to be beating a different drum. And I'm going to say they're going to get at least six over the last eight. So that's where I stand with that. And I just want to be clear on it for the rest of this year. The thing is, be nice if they get healthy. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Yeah, it would be nice if they got healthy. If they get healthy, then all of this is absolutely possible if the defense keeps playing how it's playing. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, we don't really need to go seven and one, six and two. Five and three being eight and seven at the end of the season, I, that, that might be good enough to, to lock up the seven seed, depending on how the tiebreaker. No, we'll be, we'll be eight and nine, right? Because the, the nine, 17th game, yeah, say. so... Yeah, eight and nine. Sorry. I, I'm sitting there smoking me too. So, you know. No, it's you know, all right. right. Yeah, no worries. Uh, <laughs> but eight, eight and nine, that that might get you into the seven seed. And at that point, you go into the playoffs. Who gives a fuck what your record is? Go win some games. Hey, these yeah, motherfuckers yeah. still complain. And listen, you know, the truth is right now, like, there aren't too many teams running away with it. And that's what pisses that's me off thing. about that stupid Washington game. You know what? It, it, you know, and, and it's going to drive me insane because. It was a bullshit call at the very end of the game, and the guy missed the field goal, period, stop. The, the, if there wasn't all sides, it wasn't. I, we could argue that shit to a blue in the face, but the reality is is that that shit almost never gets called on that kind of play with no contact. It didn't, didn't cause anything to happen with the kick. The guy missed the kick. Game is over. Giants win, period, stop. All right, and all of a sudden, that would then put us at four and five, and now a five and three finish. All of a sudden, puts you at that nine wins. If they push it to six wins, yeah, now they got the 10, and they're in the playoffs. Like, I mean, it's that ridiculous and how much I, I want. I cannot wait for that Washington rematch. I hope we destroy them. I hope we smack them and embarrass them so bad that Washington doesn't want to play us again next year, all right? Like, I, like that revenge game is circled on my calendar since that week, that week uh, to debacle. But whatever, All right. <laughs> you know. I it, think we should it make is a, what it a, is. And we got to play with the cards that we have. I think we should make a show, um, packed. If that Washington game, which is in Jersey, yeah. um, is a meaningful game where if we win, we're going to the playoffs. I think that we should go to the game. I am more than down to do that. I've been trying to go to games for, for the last couple of weeks now and for the Giants just to show some, some support. Although well, two, two home wins in a row. Yeah. When was the last time that happened? Two home wins in a row. Go fucking Giants. Uh, like I said, that's why I think just a little bit of momentum to actually get back-to-back -back wins coming in, going into Tampa, like – just everything that's a state. It's a Monday night game. Look, I don't care what you say for whatever reason, for the most part, it doesn't happen always, of course. But for whatever reason, teams seem to show up on Monday night. And that means us. 
So we know Tampa's going to come, but that's why I, I keep saying, like, if this, if Tampa was coming out of a bye week after a loss and this, and the Monday night game was them at home against us, we'd probably get demolished. All right. Like, and maybe not demolished, but we ain't winning that game. But with them having that get right game to just get revenge, get back on their winning streak, feel good about themselves, and then go home on Monday and have to play us, you know, not that they're going to take it easy. It's Monday night and everybody loves to play under the lights, but. You know what? That's a game where you could catch them sleeping. I'm not sure who had Tampa has the final week. And of course, obviously, as we get closer to that game, we'll break it down and get more into it. But you know what? There's a lot of times you catch teams sleeping and all of a sudden it's a game. And just like we did in Kansas City, you know, shit, we were right there. We almost won it. So, I, you know, it, it is possible. It is possible. That's all I'm saying. And, and again, do I think seven to one might be a little much? Yeah, of course. I think we're right. But five and three is absolutely realistic. Six and two is a win, and it goes back to that three and three over the stretch of seven that I said where we're at currently. And if we can get the four and three, that gives us the advantage. If we got to settle for three and four, maybe it's a five and three stretch. I'm not sure. Bro, for any team saying that they're any team, I don't care who you're a fan of, fucking Chiefs, I don't, doesn't matter. If you're sitting there confidently saying your team's going to win seven out of, out of eight games, that's not realistic for any team to do that. It's not often that a team goes 14 and two. You know what I mean? That's like paces sure. that type of like season. That's like a real, real, real hot streak. So it doesn't, you know, just because we're saying the Giants, it's not realistic for them to go seven and to, to predict seven and one. It's not realistic for any fucking team. We're just as good as anybody else, bro. We can stack up with anybody. We just have to fucking play the right game and stay healthy and we're fucking fine. Teams here. Well, that's we got, you know, we got next week's podcast to talk more about the game unless we want to take a bye week ourselves and take the week off. No, nah, I think we got I think we got some guests coming on. You know, we, we still got an action pack show. <laughs> we got to do the pick segment. All right. Uh, we'll we'll I, get to that show gotta, too. We, your boy, yeah, man. man. We catch any ground on that motherfucker. I'm, I'm just trying right. to get a, I'm just sure, trying to get a vacation day, Jules. But yeah. yeah. We'll, get it, we'll, oh, get we, it we'll take vacations in January. All right. Or maybe right. February. We're, we're like the guys do like Pro Bowl week. Maybe we'll take that week off. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Before we wrap up the, um, <laughs> basically the first half of the season and you know, move on to other topics and stuff like that. I just wanted to, we got a shout out fucking Daniel Jones throw to Evan Ingram for the touchdown. That shit was perfect. And then also that play where he converted on the third down, where he fucking juke the guy out. That shit was sick. That just looked awesome. Listen, I, I told you, that play. I saw something in him in week one and, you know, I don't want to have to repeat myself, but you know, I like to just, just in case anyone missed that segment of the show, you know what, when I saw his pocket presence in that game and just the, the maturity and the leadership that I felt he took, even though we lost, even though we had that fumble that everybody wanted to fucking bash him, he took a step in that game. And, and you know what guys, now that things are settled and, and there's a lot more Jones supporters and a lot of the haters have, have left the, you know, the area, Go back and watch that game. Watch how he steps up in the pocket. These were things he wasn't doing last season. And that's a sign of improvement. And that's all you needed to see. So, you know what? I said it. Daniel Jones is my quarterback. That's it. I could live with this guy. I have no rush, no need to get another quarterback anytime soon. All right? Let him go through the rest of the season. He's got all of next season. If he looks like shit next year, we'll address it then. But for now, that's a guy we don't have to worry about getting a quarterback in the, in the draft. I am okay with him. And I think he's a lot better than a lot of the haters give him credit for. Yep. Give him, give my man some time, man. Like I watched the giant game. Cause you know, I watch all the games at once, like when the, when they're on and I'm watching the giant game, I see these pass rushers get to the quarterback. Then I'm watching other games where the quarterback has all this time to throw. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, and I'm getting jealous. I'm like, why can't we have nice things? That's all I want. And I want Daniel Jones to not have to worry about getting another concussion or getting just drilled on every play. So um, and guys, if you want to wrap this up, we could go around the league because there's some topics around the league to discuss. Oh, there definitely is. It definitely is. Maybe, oh, maybe we should take off. a quick commercial break. All there right. And, and then, uh, you know, we'll get back into some, some waiver, some people that got waived, a couple other things that are going on. And of course the pick segment at the end. All right. We are, we'll be right back with the BBO NYG podcast. All right, guys, we are back on Mike. That's Jules. That's John. We are back with t talking topics around the league. I just want to throw one quick topic out there, guys, because it relates to the Giant Raiders game. You know, the Raiders are releasing quarterback Damon Arnett because uh, apparently he he's a 
2020 first round draft pick and he was on social media going at people, threatening people and showing them multiple guns, multiple weapons. And then no way. swear and then stories are coming out that he crashed four rental cars in Vegas within like like a couple of months. Like, what the hell's going on over in Vegas? Like, do, do you not know how to fucking drive? Like, what's the fucking matter with you? But yeah, he's gone. Yeah, listen, and you know, it's funny about that, right? Not funny, but the reality with that is, you know, <laughs> the NFL wanted to and didn't want to have a team in Vegas forever. I remember my dad talking about it as a kid. They, you know, back in the 80s, they wanted to move. And I'm pretty sure it was the Raiders. They wanted to move them out to Vegas. And like the NFL was like, hell no. You know, imagine, imagine, like another imagine, imagine LT yeah. on Coke in Vegas. Imagine what about the strip, bro. He wouldn't be just crashing cars. He'd be crashing women, fucking for everybody. You know, like the stories with LT, right? Like where he used to send, you know, these women of the night, if you call them, up to uh, opposing players, uh, you know, all the rooms and shit before the game. Yeah, that's right. That's Vegas right. where it's legal? Bro, you probably get like a crew in the lobby, bro. There'd be like 400 of them just hanging out and shit. That's like, you know, it's just crazy. Like, I get it. Look. It, it, it's a it's a party town like people literally just go there to party do people live there of course you know there, there's plenty of residencies in vegas but it, it's been always set as, as like sin city you know you go there what happens there stays there and you know you put these young guys in their early 20s making millions of dollars they got they got you know the, the, the world at their disposal you know people all recognize them they're the celebrities of the town it's not that big of a town when you think about it right the whole strip itself is not big yo man i think this stuff just gets to the heads and they feel invincible and they do a lot of stupid things and here's another perfect example of it and i just i i don't know how you fix it i really don't man can you imagine like uh opposing offenses in the 80s when they had to play against lt they probably get so excited like oh which, which one of us is going to get the hookers said to <laughs> said to our room like we must be so happy to play against lt man i would be yes <laughs> <laughs> Well, and listen, and another person that got waived today was, was uh, well, now former Giant Sam Beal, oh, wow. who pleaded guilty to gun-related charges, if I'm not mistaken, last year. It's amazing that it even took this long for us to cut him. I mean, he, he either fell that far on the depth chart, or if I'm not mistaken, I think he actually got in for a play this past Sunday against the Raiders, and it may have, like, alerted, like, management. They were like, oh, shit, he's still on the team? That guy's got to get cut. Because like, that's what it feels like. Yo, Sam Beal literally comes in on Sunday against the Raiders, plays one step, comes off the field, and now as of Tuesday, he's cut. It, I guess, like, it's almost like they were like, oh, shit, we forgot this dude was on a team. I don't know, man. I guess I guess it's we have, like, too many D-backs. Yeah, it was a good job that we did by drafting a, a third-round pick on another defensive back that hasn't played all season. But don't get Jules going, all right? I said I was going to be cool this week. No Relax. Stephen A. Jules around. I was going to keep it cool. Don't get me all wrapped up into that shit where that third-round pick was totally wasted for another year. But that's okay. That shit happens. We got Rodarius. He started to play, so. But it's true. I mean, look, Sam Beal just, he never, he never amounted. He played nine games for the Giants over, I think, what, the last two and a half seasons or something like that. I mean, it just didn't work out. The really? Like, yeah. charges. He's another one, man. Yeah, the one thing I just don't understand about any of these athletes, and I know this portion, what I'm about to say for a fact, they can hire armed guards. It's not that expensive, man. It really ain't. When you take it into account for the amount of money that they make, the hired armed guards is not expensive, especially if you're only hiring it when you want to go out to the club or you want to be chilling on the streets late at night. You're only doing it maybe a couple of times a week. It's not that expensive. Stop carrying guns and trying to think that you're a gangbanger. You're an NFL football player. Act like one. That's all I got to say about that kind of nonsense. It's crazy. John, unless you got something to say, I'm going to go around the league with some more stuff. Oh, I'm excited for the more stuff. Well, Let's keep going. <laughs> everybody, all ex Giant, like a lot of Giant fans, love her boy, OBJ. Oh my God, I want him back so bad. Come back to the Giants, please. Like, stop it, you babies. OG, OBJ is free. It looks like he's going to clear waivers. Obviously, I was hoping the Detroit Lions would just grab him number one so he'd be stuck in that shit city. For oh, him. man. <laughs> but I guess that's not going to happen. So he's free. And it looks like the Green Bay Packers are his number one choice. Of course, Aaron Rodgers, who won't want to play with that guy. But yeah, it looked like OBJ is going to sign with there. You think he's going to be productive for them or not? I can see him being productive. The first, like, few games that he's like really put into the offense but if it doesn't like click after that 
and they start like feeding the ball elsewhere, I, whatever team they're going to go to. Obviously, if he goes to the Packers, there's a lot of mouths to feed over there, and there's a better wide receiver than him over there as well. So he's going to be the number two. Um, but if I'm Odell, knowing Odell the way we so intimately know him, why wouldn't he go to a team that has no weapons whatsoever? That way he can go back to being his happiest where he was the one and only focal point on a team. Why would he want to go to like a, a, t- a team like that where he's in someone's shadow? He's got one last, one last hurrah at this where he's going to have a fresh season going into 2022, wherever he decides to go. And after that, like he's going to be an afterthought in the NFL. He's got one more shot. I mean, look, I, I, as far as Green Bay is concerned, if he did end up there and he claims that he wants to play there, then he must have a tremendous respect for Aaron Rodgers and, right. and Devontae Adams because he's going to, and, and even Aaron Jones for that matter, because he'll be the fourth guy on that offense. There's no question about it. It's not even a debate there. And you know what? A.J. Green had his chance. He'd be, A.J. Green would be ahead of him too. Uh, excuse me, A.J. Dillon, sorry. But, um, you know, and, and that's what I got to say there. But, like, there's rumors and some strong ones that he could end up in Seattle or Vegas and or New England, right? So, I mean, those are still very, very much on the table. I think if out of all those teams, to be fair, I think his best fit would be in Seattle. I'm going to tell you why, because now they could really open up that offense. Chris Carson's practicing. He's looking healthy. He should be back. So they get their running back. They're going to have him in play. You have DK Metcalf. You have Tyler Lockett. Now, now Odell can just play wherever. He doesn't have to line up on the outside because they have their guys. They could put him in the slot. They could put him on the outside. You know, they, they can do a lot of different things with him where he doesn't have to be sort of on this under the spotlight. And that might showcase him. And that actually could open up an opportunity for him and give him the skills. I mean, look, look at what Antonio Brown did. And I'm not trying to say that Odell is on that same sort of talent level, but he was at one point. There were arguments, especially when he was a giant, that we were saying he was just as good as Antonio Brown. And there was a comparison. Oh, yeah. That kind of stuff that was continuously he going. He was. And, yeah. And look, look at what. Five years ago. Granted, granted, maybe Brady's a little bit better, but, you know, Russell Wilson's still a hell of a quarterback. You know, you put old G, uh, you know, Odell on that team where you already have those two guys and he can easily take over that Antonio Brown role and, and, and really give Seattle a second push for the, for the rest of the season. So I don't know. To me, that would be his best fit. Uh, where he would probably get the most attention would be New England, but Belichick would keep that in check. You know, no, no pun intended there, but that's just the reality there. That's my take on, on Odell. I, I'm sick of mentioning his name. I hate the, the fact that he's got to get mentioned so much on, on these podcasts and Giants and all that bullshit. The dude is gone. He's never been the same, and that's the end of it. All right? that, that's how I like to look at him. Jules, that's all these people talk about is Odell yeah. every day. Like, they beg for him to come back. Like, are you nuts? Like, I think <laughs> not, like, we have enough wide receivers. We can't get the ball. We want another one just going to go out and just fucking talk a lot, a lot of shit how he can't get the ball. Forget about it. Right. A disaster. Right. Do you see all the like, – I don't – why do you think that Cleveland fucking released him? Because he was <laughs> sitting in the room quiet? Like – I don't, what do you think that he was doing behind closed doors? Like, why are we? Why do you have to even have the conversation with people explaining, explaining this? Like, oh, Odell's a team player. He's this. He's that. No, he's not. He's been released from two teams, traded away from one, basically right in his prime. And you think that he's he's a choir boy? No, he's fucking a an asshole in the locker room to the point. Fucking talking about whatever fucking shit he's talking to try to say he should get the ball more pissing everybody off around him and he's literally getting kicked out of teams teams are fucking taking fucking oh my gosh he came out he came out and even said like if somebody like claims me on waivers that it'd be a problem it'd be a problem because he wants to be which i kind of like i find it selfish in a way he's being like kind of a dick but i kind of feel feel for him a little bit because listen if i wanted out of cleveland if i want out of this mess like i didn't like it there i would want to like especially giving up all that money, the rest like, cause they had to negotiate that contract down to get them released um, to give out that money. I would want to choose where I go next. So I kind of like, I feel for him in that aspect. I'll, I'll give him that, you know? I mean, yeah, that, that, that's cool that he gets to pick where he goes, but I, I kind of hope it's in the NFC. So that way, by the end of the season, he would have destroyed one potential playoff team. <laughs> Hopefully it's Packers, not COVID. Well, COVID didn't get Aaron Rodgers. OBJ did. <laughs> well, COVID, well, Packers are going to be um, probably the division winners, I would say, right? 
Most I mean, you know, it's I don't know. Minnesota could still kind of sneak in there, yeah, but most likely, no way. I'd rather him go to a team that's most likely not going to win the division. That's going to be a competition for the Giants because the Giants, listen, the playoffs are a dream, but winning the division outright, it, they would a lot of things would have to happen for that to, to for that to come to so fruition. Go around with Old Dan being officially a free agent currently, Mike. When do you think he gets signed with another team? I'd say tomorrow. By tomorrow. All right. Yeah. All right. John, what do you yeah. think? Tomorrow's Wednesday. It's interesting. Uh, he wants to play next week or this Sunday. Yeah, but do you think that – well, I guess they're going to get him on the field if they can get him uniform by then. Have maybe with COVID protocols, that might not be possible. Oh, oh that's right. If, he, if, if, he's, if he's able to go just right and go on a team – um, then I would say tomorrow, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he can, maybe he can't. Um, then he'll probably wait until like Thursday or Friday and make it like a bigger story yeah, at the end of the with week. With that, John, because you're right about the protocols that like literally with all COVID-19 and people, you know, being vaccinated, not vaccinated, whatever the case is. Yeah. I think that's the only thing that holds him up, but it still would be, you know, important in my sense where I think that he, in my view, rather where he gets signed within the next 48 hours because he makes his big stink. He gets cut, he gets waved, he puts up the dole, don't pick me, don't then, and then he doesn't get signed in the next 48 hours. And that dude's like licking around without a team come Friday, Saturday. Oh man, talk about a wake up call, bro. That's all I gotta say. Wake up, you ain't as good as you thought you were. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, he That's great. did too much in his first three years for him not to land somewhere. But he's probably got two more stops on his career train. So he's got to pick a good one now that get get as many years out of it as he can. Um, Cause I don't know that he's going to be able to explode four different locker rooms in the NFL, not produce for almost a decade and um, still be able to continue his career into his mid thirties as an oft injured, injured player. So it's crazy. I wonder what, how much of a lightning rod he would be if he got drafted by a different team. Like the fact that he was as good as he was and as flashy as he was in New York with a team that just had won two Super Bowls in the seven years prior to him getting drafted. Like, I, I wonder what, well, like what, what his star would have been had he got, you know, went to the Bengals or some bullshit team like that. I wonder how different is his whole what, what legend is? would be. <laughs> and all kind of what we've been saying all season so far as Giants fans could have wanted to if this guy didn't get hurt, that didn't get hurt, and it's stupid ass <laughs> up off sides. Yeah, have, right? But we've got all half a season left, and we got some positivity flowing for damn sure. Mike, any more news around the NFL? Yeah, there was just one thing, one more. It's like actually kind of like a nice, heartwarming uh story. All right, all right. Um, well, we can those. Yeah, so like, you know, it's a good podcast. It's all love on this podcast this week. So you might as well share it this week, right? So the, one of our members of the Giant family, uh, Cody Stewart, uh, if you don't follow him, go follow him at underscore Cody Stewart. You know, he took his uh, son to his first Giant game. And of course, he named his son Eli. Go figure. Uh -huh. um, so like he took Eli to the game, blah, blah. They they were talking to a couple guys like they were sitting in, in his section. And the two guys got up, you know, went to this, this store and bought the kid a giant sweatshirt for his first game. Totally strangers, two complete strangers just met at the giant game. I thought that was actually a pretty, uh, pretty cool thing to do, man. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Look, I, I tell actually you, saw that. And and I'm, like, I'm just saying, I'm hoping that like when I go to a giant game, even though it might be my 50th or just somebody buy me a sweatshirt. All right. It'd be nice. <laughs> I would be like, you know, I, I, you know, I haven't been to the Giants game in a very long time because of COVID and everything else. So, you know, like, throw some love this way, please. That's you know what was funny about did, Mike? Did you happen to catch, the, like, a little bit of the like? Did you look at the, the sweatshirt he gave him? Because no. the, the kid was was young, and that was like easily a double X sweatshirt, and would have been a dress on this kid. <laughs> Because he's making the kid a Giants fan for life, bro. He's going to grow. Right. He's going to be a large individual, so he needs double X. I was going to say, like, no, he's no, it wasn't even like that. Going to be, he's, I was going to go the opposite way, just I'm like, yo, you're going to be a little fat kid growing up. You're going to be fat your whole life. So, oh, here, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> you're really going to like sweatshirts and sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to hide it. Wear black, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, so that's yeah. new around the league. Way to go. And listen, real quick, if you like what you're here and you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe, drop a like on us. I right? you're following us on, on Spotify or Apples. Make sure you subscribe, tell some friends, hit us up. All right. You know, you can hit us up at, at the BBO NYG podcast on Twitter. You can come at us with some DMs, some questions, whatever the case may be. All right. We're always open to hearing that. We love it. And that's what we ask of you. And that's all we can do before we get into one of our biggest segments of the year so far, the pick them segment. <laughs> I can't wait. Where is this freaking guy that we've been trying to chase all season? And now I'm starting to like put the fucking laser beam on him, following his ass and trying to catch up to him. Where's he at this week? Uh, well, let's take another quick commercial break. We'll let John go if John got to leave. Right there. And we'll get into these, uh, these picks. And we'll be right back on the BBO NYG pod. Peace, John. All right, we are back right. with the BBO NYG podcast. It's me and Jules now. We're going to go after our pick and pull. And yes, of course, our nemesis, Woody, is at 103.5. How many? And how many? 103.5. Like, he's just crushing That's it. That's music station, 103.5. Yeah, right. yeah, it's like TKA and shit, like Maria, you know, remember that shit? Yeah, but when I first came out, that was years ago. I was a kid, but anyhow. He's a rock that station all the time, but... Yeah, he's crushing it. But I tell you, uh, Rob made a nice comeback. He all, he's all the way at like 101. So he's like right behind him. And the big blue offensive is at 91. And Damn. Got, yeah, dude. It's like, man, we can't catch a fucking break. Man. We got a couple guys yeah. moving up. Bobby Bechet's catching up. MFT, which is me right there. John the Boar fell down to 80 because he, he don't know how to pick. Uh, <laughs> so like, yeah, it's like it's Woody, man. Fucking Woody, like he won't give up his picks, man. I asked Woody, like, just give me your picks, man. Be- you know, let me know. Yeah. Put him in. Let me know. I want to gamble. He said, like, nope, nope. I'm not messing this thing up. So he wants that money, man. Woody wants that money. So shit, we got. I hope, some- I hope, I hope Woody's making some extra side cash throughout this whole season too, all right? At this point in time, Woody, who's a diehard listener, you better be making some money on the side, my man. All right, because this is pain in the ass trying to catch up with you. Humble. But- and I guess with that said, no John in the in the equation here. So let's uh, let's put some stuff out there. I guess you get two money balls. I'll get two money balls. All right. Yeah. And then like the first pick, I guess we don't agree on. I'll go to you first. You decide, and then I'll go. I'll decide. You know, right. keep flipping it back and forth. Let's right. do it. So the first game, the Thursday night game, we got the Ravens are in Miami, and Ravens are minus seven and a half. The Ravens don't lose. I'm just like, it's insane, bro. Like they were getting dominated last, this past Sunday. And for sure, I was like, all right, cool. It's coming off. They're getting them done. And then, oh, they battle down. They get the big stop. They go down. They kick the fucking field goal with Jason Tucker, who should be the MVP, by the way, because that dude is just making field goals like right. crazy. Look, if he keeps that up for real, and I know he'll never get it, and I know he'll give it to someone else because – it's been every quarterback, and every time that quarterback gets into the MVP conversation for this season, all of a sudden they get knocked down the following week or they get injured or something bad happens for them. I mean, look at Josh Allen. He laid a fat egg in, in, uh, right. in Jacksonville this past Sunday. So it's been ridiculous with all that kind of nonsense. So, like, yo, but then when you look at it, Jason Tucker, dude set a field goal record already this year to win a game, wins another game. He's, like, the best kicker of all time. But, yo, if he does that, like, think about it. What happens if he, let's say, down the stretch with eight to go, whatever it is, he went, he hits, like, another, like, fourth game-winning field goals. You're going to tell me that's not the fucking MVP of the Ravens? <laughs> like, come on, dude. This dude's making clutch shots all the time. Like, you got to get some kind of credit. Anyhow, that's, with all that said. <laughs> that's, just, that's Justin Tucker, by the way. You said Jason. It's not Jason. Jason is his brother. Don't, don't do shit. He can't oh, sorry, I, was, I was just thinking of something, something else. Sorry, my head was somewhere else. But you know who I'm talking about, Tucker, all right? What a motherfucker. Anyhow, I'm all in. Ravens by the seven and a half. Fucking Tucker, let's go. I agree, man. Ravens are going to fucking destroy me. Fuck Miami. They cost me like one, $1. million. You know what? Do we money ball that bitch already? Just get it out of the way? I agree with you on that. Money so, it up. Yeah, definitely money ball. All right, all right moving right. along. Next game. All right. Pittsburgh is at home minus nine and a half against the Lions. I mean, I get it. You know, the Steelers, they, you know what? Like, again, I, and I, I referred to this earlier about the Bears, right? But like, literally, I was, I didn't even watch that game. It was so boring. And we're 14 nothing already. I was like, guys, ah, why am I watching this? And then for whatever reason, you know, I'm all these group chats and fantasy football and all this craziness. 
So like, think my phone's going crazy. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Also, I love the Bears are coming back all the way. They take the lead, and then like the Steelers yeah. almost blew the game. You know, the one thing I gotta knock is Ben is older, right? I mean, if you look at his draft class, Rivers retired, Eli retired. I mean, it's just him. He's hanging on. He was a great quarterback. Like, we're not gonna get into that. But at the end of the day, you know, he's at the end of his career. I mean, it's obvious. Look, he's had tons of injuries. That dude's been beat up his whole career, and it's showing. And, and you know what? I think they just feed Najee Harris too much. The guy's getting, what do you have, like 24 carries for like 60 yards? You know what I mean? Like, it's ridiculous. Sure, the kid's getting a great season, but they're giving him the ball 40 times a game. I and mean, what do you expect? So, I, you know, yes, it's at home. And yes, it's the Lions. So, yes, I'm taking the Steelers. But I'm telling you, down the stretch, I don't know how much I can trust that team. You know what's funny? Big Ben is younger than us, but he feels like he's like fucking six <laughs> years old the way he's like throwing. I, I mean, sometimes I see some of his passes. I'm like, dude, are you all right? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, like, he looks ready for like Medicare or something like that, right? <laughs> AARP or something? Like, I don't know. Dude. I, I, I like, the, I like the Lions with the points. You're taking the Lions, huh? Yeah. I, I, you wanted me to do this first? No, you you could do this first. I'm going to give okay. you, you that confident on the Lions. Yeah, I'm going to take the Lions. I think everybody's going to go crazy on Pittsburgh, and then Lions kind of, you know, keep it within range. Oof. All right, we're going Lions. Definitely staying away from the money ball there, though. I was hoping you'd talk me out of that, but, yep, got to <laughs> go to the Lions. All right, next game. The Bills are in New York. They're facing the Jets. So the Bills are 13-and-a-half-point favorites. This is a get-right game for the Bills. If the Bills don't get right against the Jets and don't beat them by 20 points, stand this. I don't give a shit if it's a rival game, division, on the road. I don't give a shit about any of that. Is the white guy playing? Right. What's that? Is the white guy playing? I don't know who's playing that quarterback for the Jets quite yet, and I don't care. <laughs> I am that confident in it because – Literally, when I tell you that the Bills need to get right, I think they will get right. All right. And plus, let's not forget, all of a sudden, New England's creeping on them. And they're winning games. And they got to play them. And, y'all, listen, it's it's not, you know, this isn't one of those games where they get to joke around and mess up. Josh Allen had probably his worst game of the last, I don't even know how many, definitely counting all of last season, probably go back to two years ago. And, and that's probably the last time he had a game as bad as he had in Jacksonville. I think it was a fluke. I don't think anything opened up, and I think it's just going to be a bounce back like they did after they lost to the Steelers. I think the Bills win by 20. Wow, I actually like the Jets. If Mike White's playing, I think they kind of keep it close. Like, the Jets got blown out last week before that bye, and now Bills got blown out. So I can kind of see it being kind of a close game, especially if Mike White plays, man. Mike White is the truth, apparently. That's what I hear in New York. And I'll give you this much. I'm I'm, I'm assuming with a 13-and-a-half spread, that, that halftime spread will probably be in the neighborhood of about eight. You yeah. want to take the Jets getting eight in the first half? Take it. I could see that. I could see Buffalo up by seven, and in the second half, they wake up and they open up a can of whoop ass. I gave you the Lions. I'm yeah. taking the Bills. I got to ride the Bills one more time. Welcome to Allentown. They call it welcome to Josh Allentown up there. I'll be at that fucking game. <laughs> Bills are winning that day. You'll see. No doubt. I got to take them. All right. Uh, next game. Cowboys, they're at home. They're minus nine against Atlanta. Now, this is weird, Jules. Like, it's one, it's almost like, do you root for the Cowboys because you can move Atlanta out of that seventh seed? Or do you want the Cowboys to keep losing because maybe some way we could get the division? Like, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of torn on this game. Maybe they'll tie. Maybe that, that'll relieve my stress. I'll tell you this much, and this is how I really truly feel about this game. If this was in Atlanta and they were still, let, let, you know, giving them nine points, I would be all over the Falcons, like all over them, all over them. The fact that they got to go to Dallas and, and it just seems like, and I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it feels like almost every big game, and, and I can't really call this a big game, but whatever. For the most part, it feels like Washington and Dallas got all these key matchups at home, yeah. right? We got to go to Tampa. We got to go to Kansas City. We got to go to all these fucking games. We got to go to Chicago later in the year, right? It's just annoying. And like, here they are at home and they're coming off of an embarrassing loss to Denver, I, I just I cannot see the Falcons without without Ridley and, and, and a suspect running game, even though they've been utilizing Cordell Patterson late in his career somehow to be this hybrid player of a receiver and running back. And I know Matt Ryan's been playing pretty good football the last few weeks. Uh, you know, I, I God, man. It's just like you said, I'm torn with this game because I have too much emotion involved with it because I really think that that maybe the, the Cowboys have been exposed and they're not that good, like I've been saying. That's what I think. And, I, just and, you know, I just hate putting my hat on Atlanta. <laughs> but you know what? I'll take the Falcons with the points. I know it sounds crazy, but I'll do it. 
Yeah, I like that. I like them getting right. nine points. Uh, Cowboys, man, maybe they start going downhill, which is always fun to root for. I'm going to tell you this much right now. Either the Cowboys are going to destroy the Falcons and win by 30, right. or you're going to get yourself right. a tight football game. And it's, not, it's not like they're going to win by 10 or 12 or 14 or whatever. No, yeah. no, no. They're you either going to win by 20 plus or they're going to win by like seven or less. Did you That's see that? Did you see that statues with like Atlanta, like the last seven games, they, they, it's like five points or less or four points or less or some crap like that. So it's like, you yeah, know, right. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if you, you tell me this game was in Atlanta, they didn't have to travel, even though it's only Atlanta, the Dallas was in that far. Yo, man, I would really love this pick, but you know what? Because I said that and you like it as well, we got to go, we got to take the points and go Atlanta and we'll see what happens with these Cowboys. No doubt. All right. Next game, the Colts are at home. They're minus 10 against the Jaguars, which, they, Jules said before, they just upset Buffalo by some magic. I don't know what the hell happened there. It was <laughs> uh, the division game. Colts are at home. They're still making push for the division. They could win it. They could steal it. Tennessee doesn't have Derrick Henry. Whatever the hell the Jacksons pulled out of their hat, that was what they pulled out of their hat. Right. They go back to reality. I don't even care if James yeah. Robinson, uh, if, if he's healthy or not. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going Colts. I'm all in with the Colts minus 10. Yep, me too. Exactly right. All right, next game. Titans are at home. They're minus three against the Saints with Trevor Simeon. Do you see the way Trevor Simeon plays football? It's kind of a joke. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say, I'm taking Tennessee. Tennessee, they play hard, man. They what they did on Sunday night against the Rams, man. It was like it was kind of shocking, but their record they're seven and two now. Like they're running, man. They got a good squad. I'll tell you, Tennessee just keeps winning, right? And, and, and you know they're at home, and they're only getting that initial three point. It's hard to bet against them right now. It really is hard to bet against them. I'll tell you the real bet, and I don't know what the number is, and I know we can look it up, but I'll tell you, if I was really, really betting this game, I would probably bet the under. Yeah. That's what I really, truly like. I know Kamara could go off, but they could also D up on Kamara and then be like, all right, beat us a different way. So I, I do like the Titans. I'm with you on that pick. Uh, I definitely want to say take them minus three. How much are you liking that one, Mike? I'm, I'm actually liking them a lot. So you want to you want to take your money ball on that one? Yeah, I would do that for sure. Money ball on the Titans over the Ravens. That's one of each. All right, next game. All right, they played each other tight in the playoffs uh, years back. So Tampa Bay is minus nine in Washington. Does Washington I talk enough that? about this game all throughout <laughs> today's podcast? I right? obviously I think everyone knows where I feel. They're coming off the bye. Brady's pissed. He lost. You know what? Yes. And here's the, this is where I was saying it comes a, another marquee match. And we got to go to Tampa on Monday night and somehow, some way, Washington gets Tampa at home. Like, give me a fucking break. But I don't think that's going to make a difference. Not to Brady. He's used to playing in the Northeast. All right. I, I think that Tampa fucking destroys them 17 or more. I love the I love the Bucks minus nine on the road. Yep. Tampa Bay never been against Tom Brady ever. <laughs> this this game i like the i like the way they play the patriots are home minus one and a half against the browns without odell baker spread the ball over the field they ran the ball like they always do but he looked a lot better a lot more comfortable looked like the headache went away in cleveland jules i'm gonna go with cleveland on this man i i'm thinking they are on fire and they're gonna make like a little bit of a run patriots i know it's the patriots but i don't know man i don't i, I think their luck runs out this is i, I think i'm just gonna have to call this get real week, right? Because this is where teams are going to have to get real or they're getting out, right? Like, you know, this, this is it. You know, this is this is the Patriots' true push, right? You know, they came at it. They got a gift from Jacksonville. They're right back in contention for the different division. Here come the Browns. They get, they get them in New England. And this is where I think this is huge because, you know, Belichick's already lost a lot of games at home. You know, and, and you know, he's got the team playing like he wants them to play. His style of football, Mac Jones is coming around. Dude, I like the Patriots, man. I like them at home, man. And, and you know what? The, the Patriots are good against the run. Browns don't got much more than the run. You know what I mean? And they don't even have Kareem Hunt. I think Kareem Hunt's out one more week. So, you know what? If you told me you had a healthy Kareem Hunt and Chubb, maybe it's a little bit better. I, I like the Patriots, man. I, I like them a lot, actually. I think they're going to be a sneaky team. They play well against the run. I think Cleveland gets handed another loss. All right. You Where know what? You just told me. You, you changed my mind. I'm going to go with the Patriots. Only <laughs> I think they Nick Chubb is like, I think he's dealing with he's on the COVID list. So this yeah. he might not play right on Sunday. So all right, I'll go with the Patriots now. But if Nick Chubb plays, man, I almost want to change that. Ah, but we're not going to be allowed to. But yeah, just keep an eye. 
knocked out in this one. But you could go down to you go down to Atlantic City and you know change up the bets there. Yeah, I might take a quick ride to Jersey. Just I just have to get over that border, man, to put these bets in on DraftKings. That's which it. Game. But well, I tell you, that, the Meadowlands, right? I think they have. I think they have like the yeah. DraftKings Center or whatever. Yeah, just go over there. Man. I'll be over there. There'll be a couple of yeah. us hanging out this weekend. Well, I got over there, man. We'll put in a bunch of bets. All I got to do is just cross that bridge, man. Once I get to Jersey, then I'm then all of a sudden I'm allowed. It's so stupid. Like I gotta really pay that fucking toll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, the next game. This is a weird game. It's a division game. Cardinals are at home. They're minus 10 against Panthers. Now uh, Sam Dono is gone with a fractured shoulder or whatever the hell he got. But I don't trust the backups, man. When the backup quarterbacks come in, they always find some kind of magic. Yeah, and, and is Kyle Murray healthy? Is he ready to go? Is the hop playing? I mean, I don't know. know. Car- Cardinals, too, right? A.J. Green was hurt. D. Hop was hurt. Kyle Murray was hurt. You know, uh, I think even what's his name? Edmonds was hurt. Chase Edmonds was hurt. Yeah. Like, they got a lot. Look, if they come back healthy, they should be able to spank the Panthers. If they're not healthy, I think it's a toss up game. But then I, I go back and forth with the whole the way they've been playing and everything else. And, and I think there will be some guys that are right. And I think Murray is back. I think I, I almost have to go Cardinals minus 10 here just because how bad the Panthers have been. Even though I know CMC should be back and 100% healthy too. Uh, you know what? Maybe if Sammy D was playing, I, I think they might cover the spread, but I'll take the cards minus 10. All right. This is going to be my override. I got to take the Panthers getting those points right. only because like, you know, you were saying like the Cardinals are just banged up. I know they just blew out San Fran with a bunch of backup guys. I don't know how they do it, but San Fran, <laughs> San Fran has a, they, they've been having a weird year. Like they just like, it's almost like what Garoppolo is it Garoppolo's fault. They just, they're playing like a mess. I don't know what happened with San Fran. Panthers, like, listen, uh, if the backup comes in, man, backups just somehow, you know, they get you worried, man. They keep the games close, tight. And, you know, I think McCaffrey, which I got on a fantasy team, by the way, like, I think maybe another week, like, maybe starts running like the, the old McCaffrey. So I got to take them. That's my override. So you get one coming soon. One left if it needed. If not, we save it for another time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the next game, this, this should be a pretty decent game. The Chargers at home, they're minus two and a half against the Vikings. I hate both of these teams this year. I just I know, do. Right? Both back. of these teams are Jekyll and Hyde. I never know who's who, what's going to show up, who's going to play, how they're going to play. Are the Vikings going to look great? Is Cousins going to throw for 300-plus yards? Is, is Jefferson going to have two touchdown catches? Is Cook going to run for 160 yards? And then they don't. Then all of a sudden, it's, you know, he threw for 150. He caught only 50 passes. He only, he only ran for 30 yards. Like, I hate that team. I, I think the Chargers have gotten into a groove. They looked pretty good this past week. Herbert looked great. He looks back. I, I know the Vikings got a pretty good defense. If this was in Minnesota, it might be leaning a little differently. But it, being in L.A., I, I'm feeling the Chargers at home. Yeah, I'm feeling the Chargers. I just want the Chargers to beat them because this, this way it would knock Minnesota down and get them the That's fuck true, too. So not only that, we double down on it because it'll help out the Giants. Mm-hmm. All right, so next game. All right, A. Rogers is coming back. A. A. Ron, he's coming back for the Packers off that COVID. Everybody's worried that he was going to spread the fucking disease or whatever, but he didn't. Um, he played the whole year with the team. Nobody got it. Funny how that works, but let me not. Get I'm going to be talking about more about the Aaron Rodgers situation on the Mix It Up podcast. So if you don't subscribe to the Mix It Up, you know, take that chance and listen to what I got to say about that. Where, where you find the mix it up on, on Twitter? Where, where, what you guys handle there? At the mix it up pod. On At Twitter. the mix it up pod. Where you they just discuss everything, and anything under the sun, topics of the week, conspiracy theories, and all, and, and more, bro. Good uh, one. I know you got a good show lined up for tonight, so definitely should be a good one. Blowing up. So Aaron Rodgers, they're, they're at home. They're minus three and a half against Russell Wilson is coming back for the Seahawks. So I, also thought I read something where uh, where Rodgers might not play this week. I, I thought I was reading something like that but, yeah. briefly throughout the day today. Well, they're saying if he comes back on Saturday, which is like the day he's allowed to come back. I'm like, you, th- you think Rodgers is really going to like miss that game on Sunday? Like, I don't I don't think so. Unless the NFL really wants to like punish him and screw him in a way. But I don't see that happening. I think I think he plays. I'm going to tell you this. I think with Carson and Russ coming back, I think the Seahawks win this game. And if OBJ right. signs there, yeah, you- I I just I got that weird feeling. You know what? The, the Green Bay. You know they they did lose to the Chiefs. I get all that, and you know still the second loss, and Rodgers will come in with a chip on his shoulder and all this kind of nonsense. But so will Russ. 
<laughs> I mean, you know, he's going to be back too. If he's got a healthy Chris Carson, like that offense will start going. It's going to, it could be a shootout. I'll, I'll take the three and a half. That half point could come yeah. back to pay me. I don't know. I yeah, like the singles. I agree. The half a point is what gets me because that's, that's the four o'clock game. That's the game of the week. So, you know, it's probably one of those games that are going to come down to the wire. All right. Next game. I love this game. Uh, Broncos are at home. They're minus three against the Eagles. Jules, you know who I like. <laughs> Eagles, right? No. <laughs> I mean, the, way, the way they played, you know, without Von Miller, the defense stepped up. They shut down this high arcane offensive Dallas. And now come the Eagles, who I don't understand how they even score a point. They have no running game, no passing game, and somehow they score points. And their right. defense ain't even stellar. So it's mind-boggling how the Eagles actually score points, but somehow they do. Uh, yeah, no, I think the Broncos are going to just be too much for them in mile high for sure. Yeah. I like the Broncos minus three. You want to money that too? Uh, this, this is my money ball pick, the Broncos. I love this game, man. For a team like the Eagles, a young team like that to go in mile high, like that's a tough place to play, man. You know what I mean? So a lot of a lot of teams don't win there. And I, I can't see the Eagles winning that game in there. Otherwise, if they do, that's a huge upset. So that's my money ball pick, the Broncos. All right, next game. We got two more games left. The Chiefs are away. They're in the... In Vegas, they're minus two and a half to Chiefs. That's uh, I don't know. I think the way the Chiefs have been playing, but I seen Raiders pass rush, and that might that's going to give Mahomes problem. It's going to be a close game. It's going to be a real close game. And I tell you, I almost want to take the Raiders because I think a lot of people are going to be on the Chiefs, but I I can't go against my my original gut. So I I, I like the Chiefs. Oof. Wow, after all that, I thought you were one hundred percent going in on the Raiders. Yeah, I kind of think I, this is, you know what? If, if you want to talk about look ahead games, I could obviously see that the Raiders looked ahead to this game, and that's where it kind of got passed, and that's how the Giants maybe snuck in there and upset them. They're gonna be healthy. Waller's even more healthier than he was from this previous season. Jacobs looked good against the Giants. They could have gotten more out of him. You know, nothing's wrong with them. They're flying high. The Chiefs. Chiefs haven't looked like the Chiefs all year, man. This is, you know, if, if there's a get right game for them, it should be this one. But they just won two games in a row and they just pulled it out. And part of that's just Mahomes and Reed and the way to get things done. Yo, know, I, I could see the upset here in Vegas. I, I like the Raiders, believe it or not. All right, that's the and override. I, I'll take the override on this one. And, and I'm not going to money ball it. I don't want to go that strong on it. But uh, I, I definitely, definitely like the Raiders at home coming back off a loss in a big, big division game. All right. So the next, the final game, which I like a lot, the Rams are away. They're in San Fran. The Rams are minus four and a half. San Fran just looks like garbage. They find ways to lose and they look terrible doing it. They, they look worse than when the Giants had all their backup players play. Um, so I like the Rams. I like the Rams. I like the Rams too, man. Like, and I, and I even put it down when I wrote it down right now, I said, we're going to money ball that because we got one left. That's all money ball. Rams need to bounce back. They're supposed to be the best team in the friggin' NFL. They got Von Miller. Like, dude, no. If they don't show up to beat this team in a division game on Monday night, then there's something wrong in, in, in L.A., and they're right. going to have to address that immediately. So, yeah, no, I like the Rams. Uh, and, and, and that's my pick there with the money ball on them. They're not losing a Sunday night game and a Monday night game. Back to back. Right. I can't see yeah. that. You know, especially at the side of like, unless it's like the curse of Von Miller, he sold his yeah, right? soul to win that one Super Bowl for Payton oh, and yeah. get the MVP, right? Well, at least, <laughs> at least it, play. It's a Von Miller. I don't know, but no. At if they don't get right in that Sunday night game against the 49ers, then wow. Yeah, it's going to be shocking, shocking, shocking. That's all I got to say with that. Yeah. But yo, man, I, I think that uh, that wraps it up. You know, we, we, we coming off a good win. We, we, we are pretty much almost past that stretch of death that the Giants had to go to with one game remaining on it. They got the three out of three out of six so far, like I predicted. So right now, I feel like I'm playing with house money if they go in next week and beat Tampa. And obviously, we'll get into more of that next week. But, you know, we got the picks. We got to catch up to that damn Woody. And we will. All right. But it definitely wraps up another episode of the Big Blue Offensive Podcast. Hit us up on Twitter at the BBOMYG. All right. You can hit us up individually, Mike MFT Trainer, uh, Mike Trainer MFT, and myself, Jules NYC1. All right. We're going to wrap this week up, man. Hit us up, subscribe, like us, send us messages. We're always listening. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>